Hello everyone, Cindy here with Monarch Mom DIY. Thank you so much for joining me today on my channel where I love to bring you the best tips and tools for creating beautiful home decor on a budget. Today I am back with six high-end spring and Easter home decor DIYs, so let's get started. For today's first project, I am back with what I promised you last week. I am now doing a religious Easter porch sign on the reverse side of my Easter egg happy Easter sign using these letters from Walmart and this is the other side of that um, unfinished wood sign from Hobby Lobby. You can see it's got four sections there. Two of them are raised and I'm just giving all of this side of the sign a coat of my antique wax by Waverly. Brushing it on, letting it soak into the wood. Um, it did soak in quite well and gave a nice dark color and then wiping off the excess. Now these letters that I'm going to use are eight inches. They were about $2 a piece at Walmart. Um, I would have liked letters slightly smaller, but um, I'm really happy with how this turned out. So like I said, these were in the Walmart section, they're um, MDF, and I'm using my Waverly chalk paint in the color Agave. It's a beautiful teal color um, that I also used on the reverse side with the Easter eggs. So I'm giving all five of my letters one good coat on the front and on all the side edges of each letter. Now to add more interest and dimension to my letters, I am taking this large 15 inch by 15 inch stencil from Magnolia Design Company. It's called Retro Flower Pattern. And once I fuzz it just to um, get some of the sticky off the back, you can see I'm going to lay this on three of the letters at a time. I'm gonna add this really fun um, spring flower pattern, all over pattern, to my letters. It is big, so it does take a second to get it kind of moved around so you can fit three letters under there. But then once I have it arranged, once I have the letters arranged underneath, we're just going to smooth it out so that we get a nice um, adhesion of our stencil to the letters. And then I'm going to use my Brilliant White Chalk Paste by Magnolia. And I'm going to do an all over pattern with these cute flowers on these three letters. And then I will also do the other two letters as well. So just using the chalk paste and the squeegee, you're gonna go around and press that chalk paste into the mesh stencil and then take away any excess that you can, put it back in your pot. And then once you're done there, you can peel the stencil off and reveal the beautiful pattern. I love how this turned out on these letters and think it really added another level of, I don't know, sophistication and interest to the project. I decided to take some purple and white felt. I'm cutting three and a quarter inch squares and I'm going to make some felt flower um, rosettes to also add to this sign. So once you cut the square, we're going to then round the corners of the square and then we're going to cut it in a spiral. So first you'll see here, I'm just rounding the corners. I have done this before too, where you start with circles, but honestly, I think this is easier and I kind of like that it changes up the, um, the way the flower looks. So here you can see, I'm just kind of trying to go the same distance, um, about a half an inch, I would guess, around, and I just keep going until I get all the way to the middle and just leave a little circle left over in the middle that once we roll this rosette, um, that circle will be glued on the very bottom to kind of cover up everything else. So now going back to that first side, you can see I'm going to start rolling it. And when you roll this, the idea is you wanna keep the bottom flat. So for a little while, um, so you can see I have my 
index finger on the bottom, my thumb on the top, and I'm kind of just rolling it. But then once it gets a little thicker, the um, outside layer will start to flare out a little bit to look like a flower. So just keep your bottom edge flat, and by the time you get to the end, you'll have a really nice rosette. So you can see as I got to the end, the outside was kind of flaring out. Then I put hot glue all over the bottom and lay that circle that was at the end down there. I did make, I think, th four large of each um, color, and then I did two smaller ones that I think the squares were about two inches square. No, they were three inches square. Anyway, they were a little bit smaller. It doesn't really matter. Just um, start with a square cut the spiral like I showed here. I'm just showing you the beginning of a white one. Continue wrapping it around. The great thing about these is felt comes in so many colors and it's pretty inexpensive. These were probably just sheets I got at um, Hobby Lobby or even the dollar store sometimes has them. So just keep wrapping them around and then put hot glue on the bottom and flip that little circle over to cover the bottom. And then I'm just gonna arrange these in a couple spots on my sign. I decided to do three large purple and then a small white one in the middle. And then further down, I will glue some other ones on. But I wanted to keep everything on this side of the sign um, contained within the size of the sign so that when it's flipped around to the Easter egg side, you won't see um, anything from this side and vice versa. And then down here, I did three large white ones, and then I'm gonna do a purple small one in the middle. And then I think I had a couple more at the bottom right corner. But here's how my sign turned out. Check the description box if you want a link for this all over retro flower pattern, and it will be located down there below the video title. If you're stopping by my channel for the first time today, welcome. I'm so glad you're here. I really hope you enjoy what you see and you'll consider sticking around by hitting that subscribe button. If you are a returning viewer or subscriber, welcome back. Thank you so much for your support of my channel. DIY number two is going to be a really cute spring bunny beaded sign using one of these wood bead signs. I'm going to use one of these bunnies on a stake, some moss, some mini clothespins, and a couple Scrabble letters. So I'm going to remove the backing from the sign and then taking a piece of scrapbook paper, I'm going to cut a square that is five inches by five inches. This is another piece from the Spring Echo Park pack that I've been using in the last few spring videos. We're just going to put a layer of Mod Podge on our sign and then attach that scrapbook paper down. Again, it is a thicker scrapbook paper, so I am not going to spritz water on it. I'm just going to rub any um, air bubbles out and then let that dry completely. Set that aside. And now I thought the shape of this little bunny was super cute, but I didn't care for the blue glitter. So again, taking my agave chalk paint, I'm going to give this little bunny a makeover and fit it more into the color scheme of my spring DIYs this year. And I love that it was already on a stick. It made it really easy to paint. Now I'm going to make some mini clothespin carrots. I made some clothespin carrots a week or two ago. And so using these mini clothespins from Dollar Tree, I'm taking them off the spring and then gluing the pieces back to back like this. I'm gonna do a few sets of these. And then once I have those all glued, we're going to paint them. Now that our background of our sign is dry, we'll pop that back into our frame, easy peasy. And now we'll be ready to add some things to our frame. 
Coming back now to our clothespin pieces, I'm gonna use my Waverly chalk paint in the color pumpkin. I love this color for carrots. It's just kind of a muted um, farmhouse orange. And we're gonna give these clothespin carrots one coat of that paint. For my little bunny, now that he's dry, I wanted to add just a little detail. I'm gonna make a mini jute bow and we're gonna tie this or glue this um, right where his neck so it'd be kind of like a little bow tie. So wrap that jute twine around a few fingers and then tie another piece in the center and you'll get that cute little bow shape. Just trim off any excess pieces that are sticking out and then you are ready to glue that to your bunny. I decided to use some of my Scrabble letters out of my stash on the left side of the frame here just to spell out the word spring. You could spell um, Easter, you could spell hop, anything you want, um, but I just liked spring to make it more general for the season and not Easter specific. So I'm just using a dot of hot glue to space out and glue my Scrabble letters on here, just kind of going every which way. I thought that looked super cute. Next, we'll hot glue our bunny onto our background. And then I'm also going to use some of this um, reindeer moss from Dollar Tree. Just put some hot glue there at the bottom and just kind of tuck a little bit in there under our bunny. Again, I love adding the texture and just the other colors um, to my projects. Now we're gonna turn our little clothespin carrots fully into carrots by using little pieces of this greenery as the little stalk or whatever, the leafy part of our carrots. Just gluing it onto the back and letting it sit there until it is fully dried. I am gonna make single carrots like this and then I am going to make one um, like we made before where we stacked the three pieces. You can see here I'm holding it. And then I'm just gonna add these to my sign. I loved that big one there. And then a couple small ones at the bottom and then we'll add a small one up to the top right hand corner of our sign. And here's our finished product. I love how it turned out. I think it's so cute. And you can just really um, use this idea and make so many different types of signs using different images of spring. Please make sure you have liked and are following my Monarch Mom DIY Facebook page. I would really appreciate it. For DIY number three, I wanted to make a set of Easter and spring mini rolling pins. I'm going to use four of these rolling pins from Magnolia as well as my spring minis and some scrapbook paper and ribbon. So for two of my rolling pins, I'm going to paint the entire thing white with my Waverly White chalk paint. These are ones that I'm going to stencil some words on using some of my, mini stent my spring mini stencils from 2022 from Magnolia. And then the other two rolling pins, I'm just going to paint the um, handles on either side, uh, two of those, and those we're going to Mod Podge some scrapbook paper on. Now these are the two scrapbook papers that I decided to use from my Michaels um, paper pad. And so they were a little thicker, so I kind of wanted to um, help them roll around the rolling pin. So I wrapped them around and then I'm also going to roll them a little tighter just so that, um, like I said, they will Mod Podge easier onto the rolling pin. So using my Mod Podge, I'm going to line that up with um, a little bit of Mod Podge there to get it started. 
and then we will add some more Mod Podge to the back of the paper and continue wrapping that around, rubbing it as we go to make sure it gets fully attached to the rolling pin. And we will do this process on both of our scrapbook paper rolling pins and then set those aside to dry. Then coming back to the two rolling pins that I painted completely white, I did also do a layer of Mod Podge on those as well, just so that my stenciled image would um, be crisper and we'll let that dry too before we stencil on the words. Okay, so this is just to show you different ways you can use stencils. So this one's a little wreath that says Hello Spring. I'm just going to use the words and I'm going to stencil them on the rolling pin here. So all the way over to the right there using my Magnolia Green chalk paste and a very small squeegee. I am going to just put chalk paste on the word spring first. And then once we have that done and we've done the peel and reveal, we will dry it just a little bit with my little heat gun. And then we'll come back and we'll stencil the word hello so that our entire rolling pin says hello spring. Now for this rolling pin, I'm going to use my baby pink chalk paste and I'm gonna use two different stencils so that I can stencil the words Easter blessings. Here on this Easter is for Jesus. I'm just going to do the word Easter. And then I have another stencil that says Easter blessings that I'm gonna use the word blessings. I just had to um, use this other Easter word because you'll see in a second on the other one, the word Easter was too big for my rolling pin. Once my rolling pins were all dry, I am taking three different ribbons and jute twine, and I'm just going to tie a knot on one end of the rolling pin just to dress it up. I believe this ribbon, all three of these ribbons were from Dollar Tree this spring, and then I'm using jute twine on the other one, just tying a knot and then trimming the ends.
And here are my finished rolling pins. I just love how they turned out. They make me so happy. And I just really want spring to be here. And these would be a great addition to a tiered tray. If you enjoy budget home decor DIY videos like this, please consider giving this video a thumbs up as it lets YouTube know that you are enjoying my content and will allow me to grow my channel and bring you more videos each and every week. You guys know I love my reversible projects. This is a reversible Easter egg and large chick. I'm going to use some tumbling tower blocks, some heart wood plaques, and also this large Easter egg. This was from Target's Dollar Spot last year. It is pretty thick wood, and this one side has these Easter egg um, zigzag lines on it. I'm gonna give the whole front side, the sides, and the back side of this large egg shape, um, a coat of my Waverly chalk paint in the color Maze. And then for my large egg, I'm going to paint three of these heartwood plaques with my pumpkin chalk paint. Now that our paint is dry, I'm gonna come back to the side that has the zigzags. And I have two um, scrapbook papers here that I'm going to use this stylus and I'm going to kind of trace the zigzags onto my scrapbook paper. And then once we have that done, we'll cut out the pieces and then Mod Podge them onto the egg. So I'm gonna do this pink and white gingham check at the very top of the egg. So we'll do the zigzag and then the rounded part, cut that out and like I said, get it ready to Mod Podge. And then we're going to use that flower paper on the third section right here. So we'll just again, trace the zigzags with the stylus and cut that piece out. Now that we have those pieces cut out, we're going to put some matte finish Mod Podge on those sections of the egg, and then we'll lay the paper down, smooth that out, put some more Mod Podge on top, and then we'll let that dry completely. Also, I will put some Mod Podge on the parts of the egg that will stay just the yellow paint. That way everything has a nice uniform finish. Just make sure you smooth this out again. This is a thicker scrapbook paper, so I'm not doing the spritzing of the water, but I find that I can go ahead and put the top layer of Mod Podge on right away, and it doesn't seem to make bubbles. Then once our scrapbook paper is completely dry, we'll take our Fisker's fingertip knife and flipping over our egg onto a uh, self-healing cutting mat, we'll just cut that excess paper off and get everything nice and trimmed up. Now that our egg side is finished, we're going to turn this other side into a large chick. 
for the eyes, I'm taking two of these wood lemon stickers that were from Dollar Tree and taking the sticker part off the one side, I'm just going to color these in with a black paint marker. Of course, you could use a Sharpie or you could even use your chalk paint if you want. And I'm going to glue those on. Then taking this one heart shape plaque. I'm going to glue it upside down so that I have that little bit of a ledge um, because the top is a little bit indented. I don't know how else to say, but if you just put some hot glue under there, then you can line that up and make the nose stick out. Now for the feet, the other two hearts, I'm going to put one orange painted uh, jingle block there and then we're going to glue these on the front kind of at an angle like that so that it looks like our little chick is just sitting with his feet facing out. And our last little touch on this chick is just to use a couple white buttons that I got from Walmart and just add a little bit of extra detail to the eye. So here is our Easter egg side just with some lavender florals from Walmart. This can lean against um, a wall or a shelf and then we'll flip it around and take a look at our cute very large chick using the egg shape and three of those heart plaques. Now DIY number five is going to be very similar, but we're gonna make mini Easter egg chicks using this set of two Easter eggs from Dollar Tree. Um, they come with a little hanger on them and a hole. Super cute, they look like little yellow shiplap. So I'm gonna use six smaller wood hearts from I believe Hobby Lobby or Michaels and four little um, Jenga blocks, or I think these are the version from Dollar General, but we're going to paint our hearts and our Jenga blocks with that pumpkin Waverly chalk paint again, just like we did with the large version. And we're gonna glue everything together pretty similar. So here is our little leg for one of our chicks and we'll glue the heart like this facing up. We'll do two legs with heart feet for each of our small chicks. Then sitting our legs up, we're gonna put some hot glue on the other end of them and then press them into our egg shape to give legs to our little chicks. We'll do that to both. Now, in order to make these flat hearts stick out, I did need to cut a little piece of a wood dowel and glue that right across that center line there. And then we're gonna use that to glue the heart on so that it can stick out just like that, like a little beak and kind of like the ones on the large chick. So a little bit of hot glue on the dowel, a little on each tip of the um, heart there. And then we'll also add a couple black buttons from Walmart for the eyes for a little chick. Now I did also wanna do something to cover up that hole where the um, little ribbon was when we bought these at Dollar Tree. So I took a spool of yellow ribbon from Dollar Tree and it's a little hard to see here, but I just made like three little loops and I hot glued them together. You'll see me do that here in a second. Just gluing between all the hoops and then once this um, glue is dry, we're gonna glue that right over where the hole is to make it look like some little feathers sticking up out of the top of our chick's head. And I just thought that was so cute and a great way to cover up the hole. And I love how these two little chicks turned out. Really easy to make. So if you find these hanging eggs, grab some yellow ones so you can make these adorable little chicks. Please check the description box for a list of the supplies I have used in each of these DIYs, as well as important links. 
My last DIY for this video is kind of a two for one. We're gonna make a cross out of tumbling tower blocks, and then we're also going to use a stencil and the cross to make this beautiful shiplap looking sign. So I love thrifting old wood frames, and here I'm using the five gallon paint stir sticks from Lowe's. I'm gonna need eight of them to go all the way across um, the frame, the inside of the frame, and so I will get those trimmed up in just a minute. But I wanted to kind of cover up the glossy 80s wood look of this frame. So I'm taking my white Waverly chalk paint and I'm not worried about making it um, completely covered. It's okay if some of the wood shows through, but I am going to do one or two coats of this, just like I said, to cover up that shiny wood. And then once I get that all painted and it's dried, I am going to spray it with a matte clear spray. Now here's my eight um, five gallon paint sticks that I'm going to use my antique wax on. And I'm just trying to hold them all together. It just makes it easier for painting them. And we're gonna brush this on and then we're gonna wipe away the excess and then we will use these as the background for our sign. Now once those are all dry, I'm gonna take my hot glue gun and on the back side of my frame going around that little edge, I'm just gonna apply some hot glue and then lay these down, pressing them down really, really good. I want to get these as close to each other as possible so that my stencil doesn't um, get into any of the gaps, you'll see. I did have to cut my last one, um, but I was really happy with how this turned out and I did also, on the back do a bead of hot glue all the way around where my paint sticks met up with the frame just to make sure it was nice and secure now this is the tumbling tower block cross I'm going to make you can um, grab that picture so you can lay out your blocks I believe I used 36 tumbling tower blocks to make this and the first thing I did is I took any that were long lines, like of three or four tumbling tower blocks, and I tried using this super glue gel. It worked okay, um, but I think I will just stick with my wood glue. This stuff is super sticky, um, and I just think the wood glue works a little bit better. So that's what I would suggest to put together this cross is to let, um, glue together any long pieces where you've got three or four blocks that go together. And I always like to use this level. It's just a nice flat surface to line them up on. And then I took... Um, sets of two and I also did the same thing. Once I had those long pieces, then I started attaching my um, cross together. You can see I'm just kind of starting at the top and then I'll go around the inside and then add the bracing pieces to the outside. So the top, bottom, and each of the sides has this one block that's kind of um, sticking out about halfway from the rest of the cross. And so I glued all of those together first and then glued the top, bottom, left, and right pieces together. And then here you'll see where we have these pieces that kind of fit into the corners. Um, you really need these because it gives a lot more stability to your cross and you're gonna wanna make sure this has dried completely before you try moving it or sanding it or painting it. Um, I did let mine sit for at least a couple hours before I um, did any of those other things that you'll see me do in just a minute. So like I said, find, take the picture and lay out your tumbling tower blocks and then just go slowly and glue all your pieces together. You don't have to do exactly the design I did, um, but this was my favorite one that I found. Now,
Now, once this had dried completely, I did use my finger sander and go over the front and the back just to get off any excess glue that had maybe seeped through. Then taking this agave color that I'm just loving this spring, I'm just dry brushing some of this color onto my cross. I do wanna use a little bit of teal in my stenciled image. I did use the sander and I was really glad it brought out more of the green because um, I was finding that it dried a little too blue. I did then um, dry brush actually some of my chalk paste that I'm gonna use on my stencil and then sprayed a little bit of water on it. And I really loved the effect. It gave kind of a watercolor effect on the cross. And so I just kind of kept playing with it until I liked how it turned out. And this is what I came up with. Now coming back to our sign, I'm going to use this stencil. It's eight and a half by 11. It says, while we were still sinners, Christ died for us, Romans 5, 8. So I'm gonna fuzz it a couple times to get some of the um, sticky off. And then I'm going to line this up all the way over to the left side of our shiplap sign that we've made here. And then use a combination of teal and white chalk paste to stencil our image onto the sign. Now that all the chalk paste is down, we get my favorite part, which is the peel and reveal. And then I wanted to attach the cross here over on the right hand side. And so I'm just marking on the frame where I need to put some glue so that each point there of my cross is going to be um, attached down. And then once I get the hot glue down, we'll lay our cross back in place and this project will be finished. I have to say, this is my favorite one from this video. I just love the versatility of these stencils and I love making signs out of thrifted frames and paint sticks. Thanks again so much for joining me today. I can't tell you how much I appreciate all the love and support you all have given me on my channel. Please let me know in the comments which of these projects was your favorite, and we'll see you next time. Take care.